Right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. It's an emotional day for all of us, Chelsea fans here, as we sit here pondering a victory for the first time in what seems like a fucking age ago. It seems like the last time we won was back in the Stone Age, but finally Chelsea Football Club have picked up three points, maximum points, from a football match. I'm fairly sure since it's the first time we've actually won a game since Leicester away, which was under Graham Potter, obviously, and feels like it was about two years ago, and I actually think was in, what, March? I think it was at the latest. And yeah, our Chelsea Football Club back? Not by any stretch of the imagination, if we're being completely honest. I don't want to get too over-ambitious or over-optimistic, because the reality is of this, it's probably going to be the last time we taste victory this season, given the running we have. We still have to play Man United away, Man City away, Newcastle at home. I think we have Nottingham Forest at home as well in our last four games. So it probably will be the last time we win a game this season and Chelsea Football Club it's taken 34 games this season out of 38 games to be played but we have finally surpassed the 40 point safety mark we've got 42 points to our name we're three points off Fulham with the same amount of games played we could potentially finish in the top half of the table which I've just realized again is not going to happen because first of all we are still shit, and second of all we have some tough games left to play which we are guaranteed to lose including Man United and Man City and possibly Newcastle as well but yeah you know what like I said I'm just going to try and be as optimistic as I possibly can be in this video because I'm going to be deprived of it until probably August at the earliest to be fair. It's been a rarity for us to win a football match this season and I'm fairly sure we've still scored less goals than Erling Haaland. We have done one less goal now but even still we've won a football match and that's all that matters in my mind right now. And in terms of the performance it wasn't the most outstanding or thrilling or amazing performance or dominant performance by any stretch of the imagination but do I care? Do I f Because once again I will repeat it because it's probably the last time I'm going to be able to say this until next season at some point. Chelsea Football Club have won a match of football. It just sounds so beautiful to say. But yeah, some uh, decent performances in there from the Chelsea players individually. I thought my man of the match, even though he wasn't involved in any goals, was Nani Madueke. I think he had a really good game. And this guy, right, he seems like such an unbelievable raw talent in terms of his dribbling ability. This guy reminds me of Bukayo Saka, you know, just in terms of his, his sharpness and turning pace, his ability to dribble and beat his men down the right-hand side, and how dangerous he looks cutting in on that left-hand side, and the fact he's able to go in on his right as well if he, if he needs to. But this guy, I think with the right coaching... And and if he can sharpen up his end product and his his uh, decision making a little bit more, just that tiniest bit more, we could have ourselves a really, really elite player on that right hand side. He's got absolutely everything and um, definitely could be, with all the players we've signed this season, all 73 of them, he could be one that we really look back on and think we got absolutely our value for money in signing him. And talking about value for money, Big Ben Badiashil gets his first goal for the club. I'm absolutely delighted for him. I mean, it's no secret that he really has been. He's just been left out of the side for literally no reason whatsoever, to be honest, and uh, with Wes Fofana being injured today, it allowed Badia Shield to come into the team, get his first goal, a very good goal as well, and yet just another very good performance from him, just an absolute Rolls Royce of a player in terms of the fact that not only is he about 8 foot 3, but he's got the technical ability of a number 10, and his passing range and his composure in possession is absolutely second to none for centre-backs in the world of football, and um, yeah, I'm so, so glad we got him, especially for the price we got him for, and this guy, next to Wes Fofana, they're the future centre-back partnership for Chelsea and potentially the French national team as well. I really rate Badia Shield. I don't think there was actually a lot of standout performers by Madaweke in this team and, you know, maybe you could say Badia Shield as well, but would we have said Badia Shield was a standout performer if he didn't score the goal? I'm not so sure. I think Conor Gallagher was okay. I still think his technical ability is very suspect, but as he usually does, he gave 100% for the team today. Scored a very nice header where he arrived late into the box, which is what he's very good at. And another player I'm absolutely delighted for, Joao Felix, who came off the bench with six minutes to go and got his goal. Goal. I mean, um, yeah, I absolutely love Joao Felix. I know he's a player that really divides the Chelsea fan base, and I'd say 75% of Chelsea fans don't really want him and don't want us to sign him permanently, and somehow don't rate the guy, which I just I just cannot understand for the life of me, because this guy, I maintain, he's the best player we've had, technically, in terms of what he can do with the football, in terms of his ability to be flary. I don't even know if flary is a word, but I'm going to just use it as an allowance for Joao Felix. I think he's the best player in terms of how good he is in terms of his flair since Eden Hazard, and in terms of the fact he can take 
take a game by the scruff of the neck and just do things with a football that I don't even think Mbappe or Rafael Liao or those players who I'd put up in that top, top bracket in terms of flair and in terms of technical ability, I don't think there's anyone in the world of football that can do what this guy does with a football. I think if we get the right players around him and play him as almost a second striker in that, you know, 10 slash false line position behind a striker, a proper striker, I really think this guy could absolutely explode in the Premier League next season and I think could definitely be a key, key player for us in years to come. I, ju I just really, really like Joel Felix. He's one of my favourite players and um, yeah, although his end product hasn't been the best or most exciting so far since he's joined in January, I still think there's a lot more to come from him and I think that what he's shown so far, he deserves to at least, at the very least, get another loan deal for himself next season. I think he's an absolute generational talent. And look, I'm just delighted to see Frank Lampard get his first win as Chelsea manager in his second stint. Obviously, he was about to become the first manager to do a 007, which uh, I'm happy he hasn't done. And look, even though Lampard, I think he made some quite strange decisions once again in terms of his, his substitutions. I think when Ben Chilwell came off injured to bring on Azpilicueta instead of Lewis Hall, where Lewis Hall is 100 times better than Azpilicueta down that left-hand side to replicate that role that Chilwell plays, which is very advanced, very high and wide. And then to bring on Azpilicueta, who's, in my opinion, past it, especially going forward. He's obviously a solid enough defender on his day, but going forward, he offers absolutely little to zero compared to what you get with Lewis Hall, even, who is a natural midfielder and is way better going forward. And then bringing on Ziyech from Madueke, I understand bringing off Madueke because he's a little bit fragile and obviously hasn't really played a lot of football in recent months, but to bring on Ziyech, in fairness, it was vindicated in the end because he got the assist for Vadia Shield's goal, which set us up for the win, but I just think it's time to stop playing the likes of Ziyech and Azpilicueta and those players who we know for a fact aren't going to be there next season. And look, it's a decent win for us because, make no bones about it, we've actually beaten Bournemouth for the first time in it feels like ever, to be fair, because those of you Chelsea fans who are out there, you'll know that Bournemouth are pretty much our bogey club. We very rarely beat them. I think I've seen a stat where since they came up in 2015, the first time they came up, they've actually beaten us more than we've beaten them. I could be completely wrong. I mean, it just feels like that, to be honest. And I think I did see a stat a little while ago that that is the case. And again, that could be completely wrong. But even still, we very, very rarely beat Bournemouth. And to actually beat them at the Vitality Stadium, it feels good. And I know that's the level that Chelsea fans have gotten to now, where we're celebrating a win against Bournemouth like we've just won the Champions League. But we've been starved this season, lads. Let us just enjoy the moments while we have them, especially in the latter stage of the season where we are not going to win many more games, if any, between now and the end of the season. So I'm going to 100% take it and I'm going to 100% act like we've won the f***ing Champions League because why not? And again, Bournemouth, the decent side. If you look at the stats, even in terms of expected goals, it was very close. 1.26 for Bournemouth to 1.39 for us. We had 66% of the ball, but that was to be expected given the fact that Bournemouth are somewhat of a counter-attacking side and yet are very dangerous in that break with Dango Uatara, Dominic Solanke and Philip Billing, especially with Matthias Vigna down that left-hand side as well, with Ryan Christie playing on that left-hand side on paper, but plays very centrally to allow Vigna to have space down that left-hand side, and he's been so dangerous for Bournemouth in recent weeks since he's come into the side. So Bournemouth, they aren't an easy team to play against whatsoever. They have been defensively solid at times this season with Neto and Goal and Lloyd Kelly and Sonezi at the back. So I do think it's a good win for us. I hope it, you know, ups the confidence a little bit and goes into that game against, I think our next game is against Nottingham Forest next weekend at home. I could be wrong on that one, but hopefully gives the players a little bit of confidence now going into the final games of the season and uh, yeah we'll take it from there go into pre-season and hopefully be able to build with next season with two or three more signings a goalkeeper a holding midfielder and a striker which I think are the main three positions that we need to strengthen in the summer and hopefully get our Chelsea back next season where we can be fighting for the title which I don't think is actually laughable to consider given the fact that I know we have had a shocking season and to consider the title at this moment in time sounds absolutely delusional but with the team we have and with shifting out 10 or 12 of these players and with bringing in a holding midfielder, a striker and a goalkeeper under a manager who actually knows what he's doing, I'm sorry to say to Frank Lampard, I don't think it's inconceivable that we could be at least in the conversation for a portion of the season next season if we were to get those things right. But yeah, just in summary, not an amazing performance by any stretch of the imagination, but once again I reiterate, do I care? Do I f***? Because Chelsea Football Club, I will say it for the 164th time in this video, have won a game of football. And yep, yeah, it's a great Saturday. It's a great Saturday overall. And I'm going to go now. I'm going to enjoy my evening, even though I have this complete room to sort out because I have just moved house. For those of you who are a fan of the channel and have watched me before, you'll know that this isn't my normal surroundings. And yeah, I'm going to have a nice relaxing evening now, going out for dinner with the family for my brother's birthday. So that should be absolutely sumptuous. I'm going to enjoy the finest of confectionery, knowing that my football club has won on football match. 
much. And um, yeah, I think that's where we'll leave this video. So yeah, leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. It would be absolutely massively appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you are new as well. We do do Chelsea content after every single game and Premier League content in general if you're into that as well. So um, yeah, leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in my next video. And yeah, chat to you later. Up the Chelsea.